You know a book similar to the Bible, where so many prophecies have already been fulfilled. It's impressive how things prophesied thousands of years ago are unfolding before our eyes. This proves that only God can be the author of this book, and we must be attentive to every warning he gives us. So in today's video, I'll show 10 prophetic events that are in the Bible and are expected to happen soon. This way, you won't be caught off guard and can prepare yourself before they occur. And if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button right below the video. Next to it, you'll find a bell icon. Click on it as well to be notified whenever I post a new video. Every day I share prayers and messages of faith, all to strengthen you on your journey with God. Come join me, okay? So let's get started. The first event is the signs of Jesus' return. To talk about Jesus' return, we first need to analyze some signs that the Bible gives us about the events that will happen before this event. See what is written in the book of Matthew. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. This is a time we are already living in. How many wars and conflicts have been reported in recent years? Nations rising against each other, earthquakes happening everywhere and with increasing frequency, diseases and plagues spreading across the world and taking the lives of millions of people. And these events will become even more intense, like the pains of a woman about to give birth. The return of Jesus is closer than we imagine. And how have you been preparing for this moment? The second event is the rise of the Antichrist. It's not difficult to look around and realize that this moment is very close to being fulfilled. The rise of the Antichrist will happen here on Earth, and he will take advantage of a situation of complete chaos to become a global reference. Many imagine the Antichrist as a frightening figure who will instill fear in the whole world, but it will be completely the opposite. Through a peace agreement he will make between nations, the world will see an end to wars and conflicts that no other world leader has been able to resolve, and that is why he will be worshipped. It will be a moment of despair when many will seek help, and only the Antichrist will come with the solution. However, he will hide his true intentions. The peace treaty that this man will make at a certain point will be broken, and soon after, a time of persecution will begin for all those who refuse to bow down to him. See what is written in the book of Revelation. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. The Antichrist will force people to worship the image of the beast and accept its mark. This mark will function as a form of economic activity in which people will not be able to buy or sell without it. I made a video here on my channel talking about what the mark of the beast is and why many people will accept it. I will leave the link at the end of this video for you to watch, okay? My brothers and sisters, when the Antichrist arises, all forms of worship to God as we know it today will be prohibited. There are many who believe that the Antichrist has already been born and that he is among us. Moreover, many imagine that he is the leader of a great nation and that his peace treaty is already in development. We cannot say for certain that this is already happening, but the Bible has already given us signs that he may reveal himself at any moment. The third event is the rapture of the church. There are three lines of thought regarding the rapture. Some believe that Christians will be raptured before the period of tribulation, which will begin the reign of the Antichrist. Others believe it will happen in the middle of this period, that is, after three and a half years. And the third group believes that Christians will face everything that will happen during the seven years of the Antichrist's rule on earth. Regardless of which view is correct, the truth is that Jesus will return, and we will be caught up to meet him during the first coming of Christ. He came humbly, was rejected and despised by men. But he will return as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And on that day, the whole world will see and know who Jesus really is. Therefore, regardless of whether the rapture will be before, during, or after the Great Tribulation, we need to be prepared for this moment. See what the Bible says. With a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left 
will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. The fourth event is the Great Tribulation. See what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. There will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Brothers, the Great Tribulation is another event of the end times that will bring great suffering to those on earth. There has never been such a distress in the history of the world, and there will never be again. It will be during this period that the seven seals will be opened, the seven trumpets will be sounded, and the seven bowls of God's wrath will be poured out upon the earth. The Bible describes the Great Tribulation as a time of such difficulty that men will prefer death, but they will not be able to die. See what is written. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. In addition, Revelation chapter 8 shows that even the celestial atmosphere will be impacted during this event. When the seventh seal is opened, there will be silence in heaven for about half an hour. Can you imagine all the angels and the saints of God completely silent in heaven while the world goes through such a difficult moment? The fifth event is the terrible sacrilege. See what is written in Daniel chapter 9. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. The Antichrist will break the treaty that he himself made with the Israelites during the Great Tribulation and will set up the abomination of desolation inside the third temple that will be built by the Jews. In the book of Matthew, Jesus makes a reference to how the Antichrist will bring an end to this peace covenant. See what he said in Matthew chapter 24. When you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Why did Jesus say, he who reads, let him understand? Because something similar had already happened in the past. During the time of the apostles, there was a king named Antiochus Epiphanes who desecrated the temple in Jerusalem by introducing a statue of Zeus in the sanctuary and sacrificing a pig in the Holy of Holies. Jesus was warning the disciples that what the king had done against the temple in Jerusalem would be repeated with the Antichrist in the end times. From that moment on, the Antichrist will initiate a relentless persecution against the children of God. That's why Jesus said, Let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. The sixth event is the battle of the return of Christ. When Jesus returns, the beast and the kingdoms of this world will wage war against God and his army. The army of God, described in Revelation chapter 19, reveals the battle that is about to take place on this day. It will be the final battle between Jesus and Satan, but we already know the winner. Christ will emerge victorious despite all the evil that rises against him. No evil will escape from the sword of God, which will destroy the enemy forever. And the Lord will not come alone. He will be with his army and will cast Satan into the lake of fire and sulfur. The Antichrist is the false prophet. And this leads us to the seventh prophecy on our list, the imprisonment of Satan. In Revelation chapter 20, it is written as follows. I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. The time for Satan to be imprisoned is near, and he will be cast into a bottomless pit, where his power to cause evil will be taken away for a period of one thousand years. During this time there will be great peace on earth, a peace that man had not experienced since the fall of the Garden of Eden. The devil will be brought down, and his power will be removed. Soon after this period of imprisonment, the devil will be released one last time for the eternal judgment that God has already prepared for him and his demons. And this brings us to the eighth prophecy. The reign of 1,000 years. The children of God will reign with Christ for 1,000 years. And contrary to what many think, 
This 1,000 year reign will be here on earth and not in heaven. This will only be the beginning of the new heaven and the new earth. And during this period, there will be much peace and joy. There will be no more wars, afflictions, or suffering. Can you imagine being in such a scenario? It will be a place of complete peace with God. However, this will not yet be the end. We still have two more prophecies to be fulfilled. The ninth event is the Great White Throne Judgment. See what is written in Revelation chapter 20. I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The final judgment of all people will be done at this great white throne. All those who do not believe in God will stand before him, giving an account of how they lived their lives. They will be judged according to the records in those books, showing that all our actions on earth are being recorded in heaven. All secrets will be revealed before God's great white throne. Those who are not found in the book of life will be condemned to the lake of fire forever. These are the people who did not surrender their lives to Jesus and did not believe in him as Lord and Savior. And what happens after that? We will experience the last prophecy, the new heaven and the new earth. God will make all things new and everything we know will no longer be remembered. We will live the experience of the Garden of Eden when God visited Adam and Eve every day before they sinned. See what is written. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Brothers and sisters, we will live in a new place, much better than the Garden of Eden, where we will enjoy the presence of the Lord without any interference from evil. This is the prophecy that all of us, as Christians, eagerly await to be fulfilled, so we can live an eternal life with the Lord. My dear brother and sister, I don't want you to be frightened by everything I have shown in this video. My goal is just to alert you that these things are close to happening, and you need to be vigilant. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, the Bible says that the Lord will come like a thief and catch many by surprise. All the elements of the earth will be destroyed by heat, and everything will be reduced to ashes. The sad reality is that often we worry about achieving titles and material possessions in this world, when in fact all of this will be in vain. Cars, houses, money, and everything we accumulate in this life will one day cease to exist. Therefore, reflect on how you are living today, and always ask yourself if your actions are in line with the Word of God. I have already given my life to Jesus and am walking with Him. If your answer is no, I advise you to pray right now so that God may forgive your sins and your name may be written in the book of life. Amen. So if you can, close your eyes and let's talk to the Lord. Lord my God and my Father, I want to thank you for this important message from your word. I want to thank you because you are always calling us closer to you, O oh my Father. And right now, I lift up the life of this brother and this sister, this person who is now acknowledging Jesus as the only Lord and Savior, O oh my Father. This person believes that Jesus died on the cross for their sins and rose on the third day. And Jesus, I ask you now to forgive the sins of this person. Jesus, this person has faults. They are a sinner but you shed your blood on the cross to forgive us of all sins, to purify us from all evil. Oh Jesus, I ask you to write the name of this person in the book of life. Your word says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that he was raised from the dead, we will be saved. And this salvation is not by our merit, by our works, but by grace through faith. Therefore Jesus, I believe that you are forgiving sins now. I believe that you are giving this man and this woman a new life, and I ask you, Lord, from this day forward, send your Holy Spirit to guide and protect them. May the Holy Spirit of the Lord convince this person every day that it is worth serving you every day. It is worth being faithful until death because we will receive the crown of life. In the name of Jesus, my Father, I pray and thank you, and I ask for your protection and your mercies upon us every day. In the name of Jesus, I pray and thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Brothers, I believe it's worth being on the Lord's side. He is the winner. 
He has already defeated all evil, and the promise is that we will reign with Him for all eternity. If today we have made this decision to walk with Him here on earth, amen. And now I ask you to share. Send it to your friends, family, and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you. I'll see you in the next video. A big hug.